Thank you, everyone. So we have uh, Master Chandra is here today with us. Um, let me introduce Master Chandra to all of you before we get into the session. Hello, sir. Hi, Shital. Hi, Shrikant. Hello, everybody up there. Yes, Madam Radhika, Madam, who's the good thing? Swapna. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Okay. So, welcome, sir. I uh, would like to give an introduction to all of our friends here in US. So, Chandra Plumar City, founder of Buddha CEO Quantum Foundation, is a successful entrepreneur, former president of IBM Corporation, transformational meditation coach, and board member of board member advisor of few non-profit organizations, including Pyramid Valley International Bangalore. Chandra Pulumar City attributes a lot of his success, including the recent acquisition of software company to the powerful techniques based on meditation and manifestation. Inspired and deeply transformed by the teachings of Brahma Shepita Mahapatriji, he has studied several masters from East and West, including Dr. Joe Dispenza, Swami Rama, Neil Donald Schwalch, Seth, and many more. He has been practicing meditation for over 20 years now. Teaches, reg teaches regularly to organizational and business leaders and professionals, conduct multi-day advanced meditation retreats and participates in several meditation services activities. Chandra, Chandra dreams of a spiritual world being established mm -hmm. in the shortest possible time where every leader transforms into a Buddha CEO and contributes to this cause significantly. We all welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sheetal. Always great to be here. Yes. How many how many are here who are been meditating for some time now? When I say some time, let's say more than a year. Are there enough people here? Those who are meditating for more than a year? Can I just raise your hand or say yes in the chat? Yes. Two years. Yes. Few. Very few. Is that uh, how it is? It's got to be, it can't be true, right? There are more people who have been meditating for more than a year. You know, the intense meditations are Akhandathyanas are where a lot of times the shifts are happening. We may not notice immediately the shift that takes place in our life but it is invariably there after a few days to a few weeks to a few months. But there will be something, something about you fundamentally changing. And it also often tied to fulfilling your wishes and desires and dreams. I had seen every time that with practice, and especially here, you're practicing 11 days of back-to-back -back intense meditations. When I had gone through workshops, which had these long meditations, back-to-back -back long meditations, there is always a shift in how I saw myself. There is a shift that I saw myself when I attended a five-day program in 2005. When I attended four-day program in Pyramid Valley of Dr. Newton, somewhere in 2011. And somewhere in 2020, I attended a six-day program of Dr. Joe Dispenza in Dubai, where again, and then every time I was there in Dhyana Chakra, Dhyana Chakra, I could only participate for two days, three days, not continuously for long, long duration. When I was there as a long duration, I was an organizer, so I couldn't really join. But every time I attended, every time I've done these long duration meditations, defining them as anything above an hour and a half, hour, 15 minutes, above hour, generally. And then here, three hours is great. There are shifts happening. In my case, the most recent one that I've seen that the shift that is occurring to me was that I'm feeling everything to be inside me. Patri used to say always oneness, oneness, oneness. There are two words he used to always giving, oneness and acceptance. 
two words. He never used the word love. He said all these are derivatives, but oneness is there and accept is there. If somebody goes with any challenge to him, he say accept. And if somebody talks about meditation, they say there is oneness. So in these long meditations, and in the January 2020 event, that seven days I was there with Dr. Joe Dispenza with a lot of participants. For more than a month after the program is over, I was lost. I was somewhere. I was there with people, but it was not with me. And every time the feeling is that everything is within me. Everybody is same as me. One time during a week long where I was deeply contemplated for myself, I was not that well. The thing that I've gotten out of that six days or seven days where I was contemplating and I was using time for myself only, was not in touch with anybody, was where, and I was doing a lot of meditations, was about this rep representation of Jesus Christ, enormous compassion. I was just feeling that compassion. If somebody, the various thoughts would come down and then each one would say, if somebody had a problem, you don't say it is their karma, so I'll leave them. So every situation would bring in, come in front of me to feel what compassion would mean. How would you go and help? No matter what the person's situation is, but compassion. Shortly after Dr. Joe Dispenza's event, this miracle of Buddha's Quantum Foundation happened. A month of me being in a zombie state of you know, that feeling that wholeness, oneness, and then out of nowhere, starts the Buddha's Quantum Foundation. Of course, the dreams were there, but the foundation started and then in a way that we least expected, so it would grow and grow and grow. When we did back-to-back -back meditations, long meditations, in the year 2009 and 10 with Dr. Newton and with Patriji during that time with Buddha Purnama, because we're just beginning to have a large Pyramid Valley Mega Buddha Purnama program in from 2008, 9, 10 time frame, because Pyramid was all ready and then everything was beautifully set up then. And again, there's a big shift for me at that time in the dreams that I wanted in terms of a company growth, sadly inv inviting a new investor, me graduating to a CEO position. So shifts happen, it doesn't matter, shifts that do happen. So it's my personal experience, friends, that when we take up intense meditations like this, the shifts are happening for us in either in our, in our understanding or in our material fulfillments. They're happening automatically. But the experiences are different. We may have, we may not have experiences. It doesn't matter. Because scientifically speaking, since we are going into the emptiness, that means we are embracing this quantum field, we are embracing this consciousness every time we meditate. And so that every time we are operating, we're becoming that consciousness every time. So we are there in it. Now what you receive at that moment or not doesn't matter because some of them are able to receive, some not able to receive. Or some of them are able to so for some, it is translating as imagery so that experience comes in meditation. For many, it does not come. It is explained as the infinite possibility, so why not? For some, you have it, some don't. But it's also explained through this concept of dreamers and stalkers. Every one of us either is a dreamer or a stalker. How many people understand this concept of dreamers and stalkers? Does anyone know? What is dreamers and stalkers concept? So there is dreamers and there are stalkers. We all divide, I mean, we come here, we come here with a certain design, but in certain way to explore ourselves. The purpose of ourselves is to learn and enjoy, is how Patri is reported. And every time you learn, then we have a new experience. So purpose of ourselves is to experience our greatness in as many ways as possible. That's the purpose of our life, right? So we are here to experience ourselves in as many ways as possible. Ourselves means our, gra our grander self in as many ways as possible. That's really why we are here. So we keep learning and we keep having new experience. So we keep enjoying, keep learning. It doesn't stop. 
but there are dreamers and stalkers are doing two different ways. The dreamers are exploring the energy world. The stalkers are exploring the material. Using the material senses, they're exploring. And the dreamers are exploring through the energy senses. There is energy and there is matter, right? There are two things. So for a moment, if we assume this all, when we go into meditation, we are moving beyond a conscious mind to the subconscious unconscious, which is into the energy world. The conscious mind is dealing with all the matter, the material world. Now, both are infinite in nature. The conscious mind has infinite power and capability to understand, to analyze. So all the knowledge, the learning that's happening is through the conscious mind. And then the energy world is where you've got there's so much of infinity of experience out there that through the energy that you are traveling, you are, you, you are going around. So both are there. You can explore both. That's infinite. This is infinite. Energy world is the soul world. The, the conscious matter world is a mind world. When we use mind, we use for the conscious mind. The word mind is equal to conscious mind. So there is energy world that soul is exploring, or your consciousness is exploring, or your wholeness is exploring. There is matter world where your individual self is exploring through your mind. Dreamers are fundamentally are taken a, a design where they're exploring the energy world. Stalkers are taken the mat, they're exploring through the mind. So in our meditations, dreamers will talk about I had seen this, I traveled to this world, I've seen this galaxy masters and I'm looking at, and this uh, Swami Ramaji, I'm looking at yoga and the Paramahamsa, I'm, I'm embracing them, I'm going here, I'm going there. They allow themselves, they almost allow themselves to go into this beyond matter world. They lose the body, they surrender themselves so quickly because that's the path they've chosen. And so they are there and they constantly are coming out with these paranormal experiences they talk about and they are they it's very natural for them they slip into it pretty easily when they go into meditation so they go in and then they find a master they find somebody else somebody else somebody else some other world that's where the dreamers are finding their experiences into where the stalkers are understanding more through the conscious mind by reading by learning they get less of these experiences they get less of this experience in meditation, but they're constantly sharpening their intellect. Their intellect, the conscious mind is significantly expanding in meditation. And so then they're able to understand what they read. They're able to further their understanding by listening to others. And then they're essentially using the faculties of the mind significantly. And so for them, this energy world experience, their learning is primarily through exploring the mind, through the faculties of the mind they explore. That's stalkers. And so for them, very less of uh, uh, deep mystical experiences. They have more practical experiences. Nobody is more, nobody is less. Dreamers have the challenge. To, so dreamers are able to go in and let's say meet a master or go into a world. It's called an assembly point. So they go in and then look at various aspects in the energy world. They have a challenge to go deep down and understand that further. Challenge meaning they need to work towards understanding that further. They got your learning happens when you when let's say there are 10 100 books are there. I can read summary of 100 books quickly, know what it is. But the moment I pick one, I need to go deep down about it. So then I get a sufficient knowledge, understand it, right? So the dreamers are having various kinds of experiences. So they work towards trying to pin down on one and then go deep down into it. That doesn't come very natural to them. For stalkers, it comes very naturally. They take on something, they go deep down into it, where it comes very naturally. So one is creative idea, you can say. One is left brain, I mean the right brain, another is left brain. One is creative idea, the original, there is something, hey, there is a master called Yoga and Paramahamsa. Now the dreamer comes and talks about it. And then the stalker can go around and explore everything about them and then know more about it. So perfectly both together sort of complement. The original ideas, the creative ideas, the intuitive ideas are coming, a dreamer quality, and then refining that, knowing more about it, making it so beautiful, presented is from the stalker quality. Both are great. So in meditation, dear friends, when we don't get experiences and only some get experiences, we got to recognize that we have taken a role 
potentially we are stalkers. And so it's okay. It is okay to not have some experiences, even though we are practicing three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours meditation, right? And for the dreamers, even though they just practice 10 minutes, they're coming out with a story. I have said, use a story, but they're all real stuff that they're exploring there, right? It appears as a story. But over a period of time, over a period of time, the difference slowly drops down. Dreamer will continue to remain dreamer. Stalker will kind of stalker from a lifetime perspective. But however, over a period of time, you know, as you progress, as you progress, progress, everybody is revealed of some experience other in meditation. The mystical experience do come to everybody at some point or the other. It is just the rate at which they don't, they happen for dreamers is so far too high compared to the stalkers, right? It's vice versa. Stalkers have the easy ability to read books. Dreamers struggle to read books. One gets somewhere the knowledge and inspiration, another gets somewhere the knowledge and inspiration. That's all it is. But both are required. Both are required. Over a period of time, as long-term meditators, as intense practice we do, we develop the abilities on both sides. We develop the abilities on both sides. So the point I wanted to bring up in the limited we have, dear friends, is that it is okay and it is not necessary to look for those specific mystical experiences if they're not happening to us. But it's important to continue to practice for all the dreamers out there, all the stalkers out there, to continue to practice because your intellect is being sharpened significantly. Your intellect is significantly being sharpened as a result, then your ability to understand through the faculties of mind are increasing. They're all the same. And then dreamers, where you get plenty of experience, plenty of experiences, your ability to segregate to some and then narrow down and then going deep down about them so that we learn something more concrete is useful, right? narrow down to some, pick some, and then go deep down about a master, about a world, about thing. And understanding that more deeply by having the right questions around it helps in meditation. So long meditations are most naturally helping us embrace this concept of oneness and acceptance very beautifully. When we experience this wholeness, then acceptance would naturally come. The differences would drop. When in meditation, when we experience the whole field of energy, because we're going away from matter by default, we drop thought, so we drop matter. And so we experience energy that we truly are. So then we are connected, we experience that whole. Where you feel you don't feel like coming out of meditation many times is because that's what we're experiencing. And so when you're in that state, then, then, then very naturally that when you are out, the out of the meditation, then very naturally you're extending that friendliness. You don't have the difference. You don't feel the difference. So we are naturally are becoming more and more accepting in nature. But acceptance is a great practice though. And long meditations absolutely help us because the longer we are in this field of energy, the longer we experience our wholeness, the more we feel our wholeness the less we feel surprised when they come out. And so then an experience, they no longer say it is outside of you. So you start accepting it becomes the acceptance comes very easily because you feel less separate with it. That experience naturally has come from either person or a place. And so then you feel less separate with it. So you, you, you have the more ability to accept it. So there is oneness on one side in long meditation, significantly experienced and it translates to a greater acceptance when we are in a wakeful time. Acceptance of, you know, whatever that is, you know, we have a lot of plans, but the plans don't happen. They don't happen in time, many times. They don't happen because we have a concept of time, because reality, practicality, these are words we use. And so we put that with the concept of time frame and say, okay, this time frame, it didn't happen, it's not happening. But if you understand that there is no time, then it's everything that we want is always happening. But until then, then what do we need? We need to accept the situation. Things did not happen that you want to accept it. 
somebody is responding differently than they accept it. There's only one word, Patrizi, I've always seen it to myself, to any person that has gone, he would say, accept. That's one word. I want us to understand the deeper meaning behind it as you practice this. Because if we can hold on to this one thing called acceptance in our life situations, then everything will manifest. Because acceptance by default comes with either neutrality or positivity. Our manifestation happens best when you are happy in the moment and then you connect with the future. Your manifestation happens really when you are happy in the moment and you connect with the future. So to be happy in the moment, we must have an acceptance attitude. When things go right, and even no problem. I'm talking about when things go, don't go right, the way expected, right? And our manifestation really is happening always when you connect with the future with a happy moment. And so acceptance is fundamental difference towards fulfilling wishes. And our meditation must help. These long meditations must help because long meditations make us feel whole more. I congratulate all of you and um, the PSM USA team. I know many of you are here. She still mentions to me that people from different uh, uh, places have contributed in promoting, creating awareness, and then of course coming here joining. I know everybody's intention is to increase this group size. Everybody's intention is to increase this group size, and then the larger we have, so naturally there's a lot more impact we create with our Sankalpa meditations. So congratulations and then thank you. And then um, definitely for all the team who has worked hard on it uh, in, in ensuring that you all come together. 60, 70, 80, maybe a lot more people are joining through other online channels also. I think it's an amazing job in US to see unthinkable to have so many people come together at four o'clock in the morning. Because you know, always the work is coming in the way, right? Many people prefer the evening and then say here in the mornings, you're coming together and doing it. I think in US, many people prefer what I understood. But I come into the morning is amazing. So all the best with the rest of the days, the rest of the nine days, but continue. Oneness and acceptance are going to be greatly developed when you continue with it, independent of the experience that you have or not have. Just remember this, and you know, if there's no experience, you are a dream, a stalker, and then it's a perfectly, perfectly valid role that you've taken, right? And so we don't have to really compare ourselves with somebody either on day eight or day nine, day ten. If they're having experience, you don't. To share something doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter at all. But these two practically, the wholeness and then acceptance are developing for us. And so there is a shift happening because of this. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me to be here and sharing some thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for the wonderful message on uh, acceptance and oneness. And um, it's really profound. Everyone must practice these qualities uh, as you expressed. And uh, we really love the concept of uh, dreamers and stalkers. So this is the first time we are hearing. And thank you so much for answering because many people have the same question, right? I do not have experiences. And this clarifies that uh, their role is different in this, um, in this journey. So thank you for the wonderful message, sir. Yes, we have many uh, masters from all over the all over the states, United States, right? They all came together to have the same intention of having the Anamaha Chakra. And uh, during this time, I would like to um, mention that you know uh, Georgia team and then uh, North Carolina, Denver team, Illinois and uh, Texas. Um, if I forget anything, please uh, let me know. So a uh, few states are coming together to. Uh, design the program and you know we we, we did work together to put this uh, together sir and as you said it is so happy to see early in the morning 100 people are joining and meditating for two and a half hours is something new here because every time in the past um, evening times are better for them and then morning we see very few people but now um, many are joining and uh, meditating for longer hours uh, feels very very good sir so Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, sir.